Number eight, you must drink eight glasses of water a day. You've probably heard that you should drink eight glasses of water a day. It sounds very reasonable considering your body is made of more than 50% water. But that belief is completely wrong and not based on any scientific study. This myth is so popular that it made insulated stainless steel bottles fashionable. This belief started in 1945 when the US Food and Nutrition Board said adults need about two and a half liters of fluid daily, except they mentioned most of that comes from food and other drinks. Nobody remembered that part. By the 1970s, nutritionists were preaching eight glasses of water without citing a single study. The bottled water industry loved it. Suddenly, everyone was chugging water even when they weren't thirsty. The American Journal of Physiology verified this in 2002 when they searched for evidence supporting the 8x8 rule and found nothing. So really, anything you eat or drink count towards that eight glasses of water, your morning coffee counts, your soup counts, that fruits you ate counts. And forcing yourself to drink when you're not thirsty can actually kill you. It's called hyponatremia. Marathon runners have died from drinking too much water. Your kidneys already know what they're doing. Listen to your thirst. It's smarter than any myth. Number seven, eating eggs every day will raise your cholesterol. For decades, eggs were treated as if it was a horrible source of food to eat often. Logically, it made sense because eggs are high in cholesterol. A single yolk has about 186 milligrams of cholesterol and high cholesterol causes heart disease. And to further push this narrative, back in the 1960s, heart disease was exploding. The American Heart Association said eating eggs means clogging your arteries. They recommended a limit to three per week. Millions gave up omelets thinking they were dodging heart attacks. The problem is the logic was completely wrong. Dietary cholesterol barely affects blood cholesterol for most people. Saturated fat is the real problem, and eggs have very little. A 2018 analysis in the journal Nutrients found eating one to two eggs daily doesn't increase heart disease risk. Actually, eggs might help because they contain omega-3 fatty acids that protect your heart. A 2020 trial with 140 people found no cholesterol spike from daily eggs. The American Heart Association now includes eggs in heart-healthy diets, the same organization that demonized them. Eggs went from poison to nutrient powerhouses in one generation, and it's now considered a superfood packed with protein, vitamins, and healthy fats. Number six, the detox diet delusion. In the 2000s, you may recall seeing infomercials and billboards on detox diets and juice cleanses everywhere. Celebrities, influencers, supplement companies selling three-day resets, targeting our modern guilt about processed food and pollution with everyday life, and promising that a three-day juice cleanse will flush out the toxins and reset your system. It sounds clinical, but it's actually just pseudoscience. Ancient medicine tried this too. They called it bloodletting. We call it detoxing. Same terrible idea, just better marketing. Your liver, kidneys, and lungs are working every second of every day to filter waste and neutralize chemicals. The National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health reviewed detox products and found no evidence they remove toxins or improve health. A 2015 study in the Journal of Human Nutrition and Dietetics tested popular detox diets. They didn't reduce toxins at all. People lose weight because they're starving themselves and is usually just water and muscle mass, not cleansing. And some of these cleanses are actually dangerous putting unnecessary strain on your kidneys with high levels of oxalates. Your body handles toxins daily without your permission. Believing otherwise is like thinking your heart needs a pep talk to keep beating, and all the detox diets and cleanses were just a masterclass marketing gimmick. Number five, vaccines make you sick. The idea that vaccines make you sick 
or cause developmental issues is completely wrong. It can be traced back to 1998 when Andrew Wakefield published a paper claiming vaccines cause autism. Small study, bad data, and later revealed as complete fraud. He lost his medical license. The paper was retracted in 2010, but the fear spread faster than the truth ever could. Parents saw their kids get fevers after shots and blamed the vaccine. The science is absolutely clear. Vaccines do not cause autism nor increase the risk of sickness. A 2014 review analyzed 138 studies covering 23 million children, zero link to autism. Denmark had a study that followed over a million kids. Vaccinated children actually had slightly lower autism rates. Vaccines train your immune system without making you sick. Some people get sore arms or low fevers. That's your body's immune response responding normally, not getting infected. The flu vaccine uses dead viruses, which literally cannot infect you. Serious reactions happen in about one in a million doses. Before vaccines, polio and measles killed millions. Edward Jenner's smallpox vaccine in 1796 was controversial because people thought it would turn them into cows. It worked, and smallpox is gone forever. Since 1974, vaccines have saved 154 million lives worldwide. The idea that vaccines make you sick isn't just wrong, it's genuinely dangerous and misinformation. Number four, sugar makes kids hyperactive. Every parent has seen it. A group of kids eats birthday cake and suddenly starts screaming and bouncing around with endless energy. We call it a sugar rush, but science calls it a coincidence. Multiple double-blind studies have proven that sugar does not cause hyperactivity in children. In these trials, parents were told their kids had sugar when they actually had a placebo. The parents still reported that their kids were acting wild. Scientists call this expectation bias. You expect the chaos and hyperactivity from sugar, so you see the chaos. The real reason kids go crazy at parties isn't the glucose. It is the environment. They are surrounded by friends, loud music, and games. They are excited because they are at a party, not because of the sprinkles on the cupcake. The sugar hyperactivity link was popularized by a 1970s diet that was never actually backed nor supported by scientific testing or data. When we blame sugar, we miss the real factors like sleep deprivation or sensory overstimulation. Your kids aren't being fueled by a chemical rush. They're just being kids in a high energy room. Number three, being cold gives you a cold. You've probably heard that if you go outside with wet hair, you'll catch a cold or sit in a draft and you'll get sick. But that's complete nonsense because you can't catch a cold from being cold. This common belief traces back to the 1800s when people thought chills disrupted your body's natural balance. Cold weather arrives and people got sick so obviously it was easy to say cold causes sickness, except science tells us that viruses causes colds, not temperature drops. The common cold comes from rhinoviruses infecting your respiratory system. You could stand in the snow in a swimsuit and you wouldn't get sick. And scientists actually tested this in the 1960s by freezing volunteers and then exposing them to germs. The cold temperature didn't make them any more likely to get sick. We see more illness in winter because of how we change our behavior. When it gets freezing outside, we huddle together in heated and poorly ventilated rooms. This close proximity is a playground for viruses. Cold air also dries out your nasal passages, weakening your first line of defense. A Yale study found cold temperatures impair nasal immunity, making infection easier to catch but you still need actual exposure to a virus first. So being cold really doesn't increase susceptibility at all. Number two, humans only use 10% of their brains. 
You're probably familiar with the idea that we only use 10% of our brains and unlocking the rest would give us superpowers. It's incredibly seductive and makes for a great Hollywood movie because it suggests untapped potential just sitting there waiting. This is often falsely credited to Einstein for added credibility, except he actually never said it and the idea is completely false. The myth traces to the early 1900s, twisted from philosopher William James saying people don't reach their full mental potential. Self-help authors turn philosophy into pseudoscience, and modern brain scans demolish this myth entirely. Through fMRI and PET imaging, it shows virtually all brain regions stay active at different times throughout the day. Even during sleep, your brain is busy processing memories, maintaining your heartbeat and other critical functions. There are no dormant areas waiting to be activated and brain injuries proves it further because damage to tiny regions can destroy your ability to speak, move, or loss of memory. If 90% were truly unused, Injuries there wouldn't matter at all. So really, you are already using your whole brain. Number one, shaving makes hair grow back quicker, thicker, and darker. Almost everyone believes that shaving makes hair grow back quicker, thicker, and darker. This belief dates back to the 1920s when people first noticed stubble felt really coarse. Military grooming myths reinforced it for generations. But the reality is shaving doesn't touch your hair follicles at all. Hair grows from deep beneath your skin. A razor only cuts the surface level. The follicle stays completely untouched the entire time. Thickness, color, growth rate are all determined by genetics and hormones, not by how often you shave. A 1928 study in anatomical record measured hair before and after shaving and found zero difference. Research in Journal of Investigative Dermatology confirmed it decades later. Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic agree completely. Shaving frequency changes absolutely nothing. It only feels true because of the sensory experience. And the myth persists because our eyes and hands deceive us. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to see more.